So what's the best moto vlog setup for 2023? And what am I gonna be using? All that and more straight ahead in today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the best moto vlog setup for 2023. Now, if you've watched some of my previous videos, you know I've been trying out several different combinations between the GoPro and the uh, DJI Osmo Action 3, also a little Insta360 in there, which we'll get to in this video as well. Plus, all the little things that you need to go with it to make it work. Which one is best? I don't know, quite honestly. I'm gonna leave that up to you, but I am going to tell you what my personal moto vlogging setup is going to be in 2023, and I'm gonna give you the reasons why I think that. Before we get too deep into today's video, I want to beg you and ask you, please, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, make sure you like this video and leave a comment. YouTube's doing their best to absolutely kill us. So if you wanna keep seeing the content, you wanna see new videos as they're uploaded, it goes a long way with the YouTube algorithm. If you will just smash that thumbs up button, that like button. If you go one step further and you leave a comment, YouTube really thinks that you like us. So if you could do that for us, I would greatly appreciate it subscribe to the channel. Lots of really good stuff coming out. I'm planning on trying to upload at least three times a week uh, in 2023. That's kind of the goal. We've got a lot of stuff planned and I'd love for you to be here every step of the way. Plus, when you make a comment, it also shows me your channel and I can go and follow and subscribe to your channel as well. So please don't forget, subscribe, like the video and comment. All right, now that the business is out of the way, this, at the end of this year, I'd say the third quarter of 2022, I really started getting into to moto vlogging. And if you haven't seen previous videos, I've talked about why that is and the struggle that I've had. And just real briefly, I own a professional film production company. We do feature films, we do documentaries, we do uh, branding and marketing and television commercials for big brands here in California, but also all over the United States. So cameras and camera gear and equipment and quality um, is very important to me. I like having the best quality I can possibly get. So when we're talking about a larger form camera like what we're shooting on right now, we're shooting on the Sony FX3 with the Sony G Master 16 to 35 2.8 lens and Sennheiser, uh, what is it, MK416 shotgun microphone um, I with an Atomos Ninja uh, up there uh, and recording to the Sony Tough Cards. Um, in S-Log3. So I get the whole thing about quality and it's very important to me to make sure that I have great quality. So when I started thinking that I, I wanted to moto vlog, now that we've got the three bikes here in the garage, we've got the Ducati uh, 2021 Ducati V4S, we've got the 2021 Harley Davidson Street Glide Special, and we've got the 2021 Harley Davidson Pan America Special. I knew that I wanted to start moto vlogging, but I also knew at the same time that I wasn't willing to compromise um, quality. Not saying anything bad about the small action cams because they're great for what they do. I can't exactly put this Sony FX3 uh, on my helmet, um, although I am trying to figure out a way and build a rig for the Pan America where I can have the larger format cameras like the FX3 and our FX9s and our RED cameras and things like that. That's gonna be a video coming up down the road. But I wanted to have the good quality. So the first thing I did was I did what everybody did. I go and I buy GoPro because GoPro is the leader in action cameras. When you talk about small form factor, uh, run and gun type shooting, great settings right out of the box, GoPro has been the camera for years. Over the last two or three, four years, other companies have stepped up and really tried to take a piece of their market share. DJI being one who makes phenomenal drones, owns several of those. They've brought out the DJI Osmo Action 3 camera to really compete and go after GoPro end users. Then you've got new companies like, um, what is it, Insta360. And I'll get a little bit, here in a little bit what I think about the Insta360. Is it an option? It's totally an option. But I'll give you my thoughts on what I think about that stuff first. So what we, what we went to first is actually I had the GoPro Hero, 
nine, I think it was. Actually, I've got the six, seven, eight, nine. Skip the 10. But then I went and picked up the little GoPro Hero 11 when it came out. Is that focusing for you? Um, love this little camera. There's a lot that it will do. Um, I love that they went high bit rate with these cameras. Finally, you can get a little bit better, uh, a little bit better uh, footage with it, a little bit better looking. You know, the 10 bit color space and all that looks really good in my opinion. And I've got the uh, the Polar Pro uh, filter, ND filter, which helps you can reduce the shutter speed. Uh, if you don't know a lot about cinematography, one of the things you want to know is that in filmmaking, you always want to try to keep your shutter speed um, half of your frame or double your frame rate. So if I'm shooting 24 frames a second, um, I want to make sure that if possible, my shutter is at 148th. Most of the time, these cameras don't do 148th, they do 150th. So 148th, 150th, always make sure that your shutter speed is double what your frame rate is. So that, and if you wanna shoot um, slow motion stuff and you wanna shoot 60 frames a second, make sure your shutter's at 120. If you wanna shoot 120, make sure it's at 240. So there, there's a lot of rules like that. And there's a lot of people on YouTube that are a lot better than I am that are, can teach you about cinematography. I'm a hands-on and learn. I didn't go to school. I just dove into the cameras and learned it all myself, learned the settings that I like. But straight out of the box, the GoPro Hero 11 uh, Black it's a great camera. As you can also see on here, I've got the media mod, um, which helps us be able to just plug our lavalier microphones straight into the media mod and get, you know, decent audio. Or at least you get the audio that most everybody else out there that has a Moto Vlog channel, you, 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 you hear what they do, and that's kind of what everybody's doing. There are some different selections you can go through with microphones. I've tried the uh, Rode Lavalier microphones. I've tried the Shure, what are they, MVK something microphones. I've tried the Purple Pandas. The thing I don't like about the Purple Pandas, is you have to use the TRS to TRRS uh, connector. If you don't get the right kit, you've got to order that separately. So that was a little frustrating, but honestly, when it came right down to it and I was using the GoPro Hero 11 Black uh, with either the Rode or the Shure, both microphones sounded almost equally as good or equally as bad, uh, if you want to put it that way. Because there are studies out there that show, and those of you that want to start channels, the research shows people are 10 times more likely to turn off of a video because of poor audio instead of poor video. So where they might be a little forgiving on the footage not being as clear or the way that they want it, or even in 4K for that matter, um, they'll be a little forgiving on that end. But when the audio is bad, that is generally when people are, I'm out, I'm out. They turn you off, they turn you off and they go to somewhere else. The one thing that I noticed across all Moto Vlog channels, primarily because we have to put the lavalier mic and shove it behind the ear pad and do all that, that it always seems to get too much road noise, too much distortion, because when you're talking, the microphone is literally like right here. So your voice naturally trying to overcome the road noise is speaking a little louder. There are some things you can do, not on GoPro to where you can totally lower the gain stage of the mic to where it doesn't pick up as much of that. I'll get into a solution for that here in just a second. But you, you, you look, you get what you get and there's absolutely nothing wrong. So if you wanna start creating content, go the GoPro route, get you a good lav mic, make sure that it's TRS and not TRRS. You can get the media mod, you can plug it directly into the media mod on your bike and off you go. And you're gonna get decent footage. I do, however, I do recommend that you pick up the uh, Polar Pro ND filters. Not a paid sponsor, don't give a shit one way or the other, although there are links down in the description to everything I'm talking about today. Um, so if you wanna go pick it up, the links are down there. If you wanna find it on your own, do that too. I really don't care one way or the other, but I do recommend them. Mainly for me, I'm in Southern California. Uh, the sun is shining all the time, well, almost all the time. The reason we have it uploaded in five days is it's literally been raining almost every day and it's been cold as all get out. So 
which is odd for us. But normally the sun's shining. So I have either the ND32, the 16, or the 8. Primarily, I keep the 32 on it because if it's a little too dark, I can bump the, the uh, exposure in post and I can bring that up a little bit. But it seems to do me really, really well. If you've got cloudy days, then an ends, uh, the ND16 uh, will do you well. Really, I don't see a situation for needing the 8. I just don't. The 16 and the 32 are perfect, but they come, I believe, in a set. Uh, to where you just twist the lens that came up uh, with your GoPro on, um, off, spin these on, and you're there. So you'll get the 8, the 16, and the 32 right there. Another uh, microphone option that I've seen some people using are one is uh, one of these. And let me let me see if I can zoom in on that. One of those. What is that, you ask? That right there is the microphone to a gaming headset. Um, her Two Wheels uses one of these, and I saw her recommend this, and I thought, I gotta give this a shot, because what you can do is you can plug this into the media mod and then curve that up under the microphone, uh, under the helmet, the chin of the helmet. There you go, you're talking. Her audio always sounds really good, so I thought I would get it and try it. I don't know if they sent me a bad microphone or not, but every time I've tried to use this microphone, it clips in and out, it's a lot of static, and it's completely unreliable, so I would not go that route. But if you can get one that sounds like hers, it sounds really, really good. Okay, option number two, and uh, this is where I went next. And to be honest with you, I really am happy and glad that I did. And that is going this route. This is the DJI Osmo Action 3. And I have to say, I absolutely love this camera. Let me tell you, for me, and look, I'm not putting down anybody that uses GoPro. I'm not ever going to put any down, anybody down, period. If you're strapping a camera onto your helmet and you're out there making content, busting your ass, good for you. I don't care what, I don't care if you use your cell phone. I don't care. Good on you. You're a content creator. You want to get out there. Whatever you use is great. What I'm talking about are my personal opinions after using these. I prefer the color science. I prefer the field of view. And I prefer the overall image quality of the Action 3. Now, there are a lot of people on YouTube with a lot of videos that have trashed this camera. I'm not saying anything bad about those people. I will say that I don't know that they maybe not, they don't fully understand the capabilities of the camera, diving into the settings of the camera to get really great quality footage out of it, which by the way, is also possible to get with the GoPro Hero 11 or other GoPros. But I really like the DJI. I've got the uh, Polar Pro ND filters coming for this camera as well, but I will tell you, if you go back and watch the last couple of videos, um, I have used this camera exclusively, had not had the ND filters, and was able to color grade everything in post, and it looks great. To me, now, I've also had other people in the comments and, and friends that have seen the videos text me and go, man, I really like that camera. I can't believe how well it, it, it translates and how, well the, how good the image quality is. One of the things I've noticed about the GoPro v versus the DJI Osmo Action 3 is that, I don't know if you've noticed this, and if you have, put this down in the comments, but sometimes when I'm watching other Moto Vlog channels, I've got it in 4K and I'm watching on an 80 inch TV. Um, the quality sometimes seems a little grainy and it seems a little pixelated. And I know for a fact that they're, they've uploaded a 4K video, so they're shooting in 4K or 5K, but it always looks a little blurry. It, it, it just looks a little off. When I watch videos with the Action 3, I don't notice that. Maybe it's there for you, but I don't notice it. When I watch my videos back the same way I watch everybody else's, I don't see that aliasing. I don't see the pixelation. I don't see any of that. It's just as clear as humanly possible. Um, if you'd like to see a comparison of these uh, two cameras, you can go back to the comparison video that I did a couple videos back and you be the judge. Um, one of the things that was frustrating about the DJI Osmo Action 3, which is a crucial and important part of moto vlogging is the audio. 
So one thing I noticed was I thought, okay, what I didn't know when I bought the camera because I didn't pay enough attention, and that was totally on me. The only input into this camera is a USB-C right there. That's it. That's the only way to get anything into this camera. They also make their version of the media mod, but it doesn't do anything. It's just a cage. Um, why they made it, I don't know. If somebody knows, let me know. It came in the pack that I bought the camera in, but it, it does nothing. Um, so I don't even put it, I don't even put the cage on this camera at all. So what I did have to do was I had to get on Amazon and buy this. This is a USB-C to TRS connector. And what you have to do, and I'm, I'm not trying to be treating anybody like it's elementary school here, but y you never know. I like when people are thorough, we're gonna be thorough. What you gotta do is take this camera, plug the USB-C to TRS, a connector in the side of your camera, and then plug your lavalier mic into there. Boom, you're good to go. Your videos are gonna be awesome. They're gonna sound awesome. Not. What I didn't find out until after I had made uh, one very lengthy video, I was out filming. We had been filming all day, me, Josh, and Luke. Got back. It's like, all right, I think I'm gonna go ahead and edit the video and get it out. And what actually happened was all of the audio was unusable. And I actually put a portion of that audio in, in a video, a couple of videos ago. It's unusable. What was happening was, is that the microphone was overdriving the preamps in the camera, making the audio again, unusable. So I thought, what the hell? So I dug into the camera and I realized, and I go, oh, there is a setting in here. This camera out of the box comes set with a gain stage plus six dB. Some microphones you need it, some microphones you don't need it. Every microphone that I tried that I have in my arsenal overpowered it at six. So I took it all the way down to zero. I changed that setting back to zero. It's plus six out of the box. So folks, if you go buy this camera, the first thing you need to do, if you plan on moto vlogging, is go into the settings and take it from plus six all the way down to zero. Trust me, you're gonna wanna do that. Um, so then, I okay, let's film another video. It's now it's at zero. I'm not gonna have any of those problems. I went out, shot the video again, came back. Guess what? Same problem. Not as bad, but still, in my opinion, unusable. So I'm like, what in the world is going on? What is the answer here? I could either try to buy three or four or five microphones, to see if I could get one that had a low enough input that was perfect. I had, I, to be quite honest with you, I had my Purple Panda with the TRRS adapter and I thought, let me try the Purple Panda. But I then forgot I broke the Purple Panda TRS to TRRS con connector uh, adapter out of uh, anger one night when I was trying to get it out of my Clem Cryos helmet. So I thought, okay, what, what can I do? And then the thought hit me. DJI and DJI. Maybe like Sony, when you use two of their products, they go hand in hand and they work well together. And I got really, really excited. So I went down and I grabbed, or I went back upstairs and I grabbed this. This, friends, is an amazing piece of gear. Come on, focus for me here. This is an amazing piece of gear. This is the DJI mic. And as you can see, it comes with one receiver, two transmitters. It also comes with these adapters up here that are for, uh, there we go, uh, lightning connector and USB-C. So I thought, oh, and by the way, they all come in this charging case, which you just charge USB-C right here and it charges them all the time. I have yet to run out of battery life while using this. So here's what I did. I opened it up. I took out the receiver. I put the receiver with the USB-C adapter directly into the side of the, I tell you what, let's just do it. I put it directly into the side of the DJI Action, Osmo Action 3. So I just simply took the USB-C connector, slid it on there, first realized that your initial thought and process is going to be to put it in where it's facing the lens. Don't do that. <laughs> Went out, shot another video and realized that when you put it like this, I'll just put it in and show you. When you put it in like that, all of your footage is 
is going to have a little bit of the camera showing when you've got it on ultra ride, which is the setting that you really want to have, in my opinion, on this camera. So what you have to do is not do that. What you have to do is go against what you think is right and turn the receiver around backward. Turn it backward to where the front of the camera looks like this. Let's get you focused here. Where the front of the camera looks like this and you can see the back right there of the DJI mic, all right? Then all you have to do, or what I did, was got my one of the DJI mic uh, transmitters right there. Such a cool little thing. Oh, yes, it looks so awesome. What I did, see how small that is? I'm trying to, if you can see that, that is, I mean, there's my thumb. There's the size of this thing. So it's, it is not, it's, it's, it's very small. Let's see if I can get this thing to, to focus in for you here. It's that small, very, very, very small. What I did was take this and inside my helmet, I undid my cheek pad, stuck this down and turned it like that so that this microphone right here is facing just like your any of other lavalier mic would wanna do. And I didn't bring it down here with me, but this comes with a dead cat that you put over that microphone and screw on. And so I put the dead cat on it and then I went out for a ride. Now, I was blown away when I came back. Um, there were, of course, some settings that I needed to adjust, but here's the one thing. When you start involving the DJI mic, what this receiver allows you to do is take the gain even further down. So I was able to go down to negative 12 dB on the receiver. That made sure that road noise, me talking, anything else that's happening while I'm out there on the bike is not overdriving the microphone and overdriving the preamps and making the audio unusable. Um, I still have it set at negative 12, which is a little low and I always have to pump it up in post with either a compressor or something like that. So I may increase it a little bit to maybe negative 10 dB and see you know, what, what happens there. Um, but right now I've got it set on negative 12 and I absolutely love this setup. So moving forward into 2023, as I start to make more and more and more content, my go-to setup, is going to be the DJI Osmo Action 3 with the DJI mic. This gives you a wireless solution. I'll tell you another reason that I like this setup so much. I enjoy watching, so what I enjoy watching, I enjoy creating. So I enjoy, I enjoy a little bit more of the vlog uh, aspect thrown into the moto vlogging. Um, I'm not a real big fan of the video comes on, you're on the motorcycle, you're on the motorcycle the entire time, and you don't really see anything else. I wanna take you guys on some adventures. I wanna take you to do some very cool and interesting stuff that I get to go do. One of the things that makes this a great solution for me is that because this comes with a magnetized or a magnet with it, let's say I've got this on the inside of my cheek pad, we're rocking and we're rolling and the audio sounds great in the helmet, but then I get off the motorcycle and I wanna take you guys in someplace and I don't wanna look like an idiot with a big camera rig like what we're using right now. Some people don't mind that, I just, I can't get used to being out in public and having a big camera, I just can't. But these little cameras don't mind so much, but I still wanna get great audio. What do I do? All I do is one of two things. I either take this transmitter that I've got behind my cheek pad, I take it out of my helmet, I simply take the magnet off the back, and then I just simply clip it to my shirt right there and we've got great audio anywhere I wanna go. So now I can go, I can vlog around, I can walk here, I can turn the camera around, I can do whatever I want. I can get up, I can move, I can do this, I can do this, I can aim over that, I can do whatever I want. And the audio is still going to be really, really good. It's going to be clear, it's not going to be distorted, and I can work with it in post with equalizers and compressors and limiters, whatever I wanna to do to make sure that that audio stays consistent. Then when I wanna go get back on the bike, 
All I got to do is take the magnet, take that off, stick it back on there, put it back behind my cheek pad, and off we go. Or I can simply grab the second receiver or transmitter that comes with the DJI mic and I can already have it on me. Um, I will say these magnets are very strong. Um, I was doing a video and I had it on my shirt and I was doing like 80 miles an hour down the freeway and my shirt was flapping all over and when I got to a gas station, I'd forgotten that I'd put it there. Guess what? It was still there. But if you wanna be safe and secure, put this in your pocket. When you get off your motorcycle, leave everything exactly the way that it is, take this out of your pocket and just simply do that and you're gone, you're, you're done. Just walk around, do your vlog, do whatever you wanna do. You go back to get on the motorcycle, you just take the thing, put it back, put it back in your pocket. What better of a solution could you possibly have than that? That's a completely 100% wireless setup. Wireless moto vlogging, it makes it just easy. And for me, I don't know about you guys, that's the way I want it to be. As a creative, I want to make content. I hope to make content that you enjoy, but I need to make content for me. What I can't do is get frustrated in the process. I can't worry about which mic this, which camera that, is it gonna work, is it gonna do? And then you get bogged down and then, you don't wanna create. I wanna create, so I need it to be as easy as humanly possible when I go to push record. I know I'm getting great video quality and image quality. I know I'm getting great audio that's usable every single time. So that's going to be my setup in 2023. I have put links to everything we've talked about down in the description below. Even my huge cinema rigs, if you wanna know about those, the link's down there uh, to find out more information about all those as well. But I will tell you this, I'm really excited about creating content again and doing so in such a small form factor. One of the videos I'm gonna do coming up is a mobile charging station. I'm gonna show you guys this thing that I've built with a battery backup that's a, that allows me to roll down the road and charge my um, batteries for the Action 3, which I got the Adventure Kit, which comes with three or four batteries. Uh, in another case that's a lot like the DJI mic that charges with USB. I'm gonna show you this kit that I'm building that has a battery backup in it with three or four batteries for the GoPro and the uh, DJI Osmo Action 3 and the microphones all with USB charging and it charges while I'm going down the road. So if I need to change a battery quickly, it's charging everywhere that I'm going. When I get home, I don't take all of this out and off the helmet and all that and, and, and I don't do that. All I have to do is take that bag, that molly pouch that I've, I'm putting all of this in, take it, plug it into the wall, and it charges the battery back up. So all of my stuff is charged all the time. When I leave the house and I hit record and I'm driving down the road, my GoPro battery's going dead or my Action 3 battery's immediately starting to drain and go dead, but it doesn't matter because I've got other batteries charging. When I get where I'm going, I take that one out, put another one in, put that one in the charger, and it starts charging as I go down the road. Again, I'm looking for solutions that make me wanna make content. If it's gonna be difficult, if it's gonna be hard, I don't have any interest in doing it. I want it to be fun, but I want it to be easy as well. What do you guys think? What do you think about my choices? What do you like better? Do you like the GoPro better? Do you like the Action 3? I told you I was gonna talk a little bit about uh, Insta360. I'll tell you, I love the technology. Um, I do, just for me, in order to get the kind of shots that you see that are really cool, you've gotta have this long damn thing hanging off your motorcycle, and I'm, I'm not into that. And if you're not going to do that, and you're just gonna use one of the front-facing 4K lenses, then there's no sense in having a 360 camera. I will also say I've looked at some other channels and some people that are using uh, the Insta360. One of the things I don't like is uh, that camera is actually bigger than this uh, mic case uh, stood on its side. I also don't like having that on my helmet. I mean, there is a big, big difference between having something like that on your helmet and having something like that on your helmet, okay? I just don't want all that weight. I don't want all that. Not knocking them, they're a great company. Um, but just for me, 
It's just not something. Maybe I'll get into them later, use them as B-roll or something like that. But I feel like I'm finally coming into what I feel like is my perfect moto vlog setup. I've got the camera that I like, and, and I cameras actually. I still love the GoPro. I'm gonna use it as a being. I'm gonna put it forward facing, shooting back. Unless I just go buy another DJI uh, Osmo Action 3, which is probable because this camera is, I think it's 329 versus 499, something like that. I, there's a huge price, price difference uh, between the two cameras. So I say good on you, DJI. I love this little camera, and that's gonna be my Moto Vlog setup for 2023. I would love to hear what you're using. I'd love to see a link to your channel. All you have to do is make sure you leave a comment below so that I can go check your stuff out. In the, if, you do, if you're not, you're not Moto Vlogging, but you enjoy it, tell me what you like about other Moto Vlog channels that you see. Do you like the Insta360 look? Do you like the GoPro? Do you like the Action 3? What else do you like? and maybe we'll get into some of that as well. Guys, thank you for joining me for this video. I know it was kind of stagnant, I'm just kind of sitting here in the garage, but I wanted to do this video because it's been important to me to share with you the results that I have found and what I'm gonna be using moving forward. But again, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you don't mind and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Just subscribe hit the thumbs up, smash the like button, and leave a comment. Let YouTube know that you give a damn. I guess that's the thing we have to do these days. Anyway, guys, thank you. I tell you what, a lot of girls getting into moto vlogging as well. So guys and girls, thank you for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. Ride safe. I'll see you in the next one.